Does truth matter? I'll say unequivocally yes. However, what is the truth? How do you find it? And how do you test it? Those are things that religion isn't remotely interested in answering. They just want to keep your butt in the pews and your money flowing towards the front. So, um, here we go again. Strap in. Today, we're going back to the uh, well of stupidity that is John MacArthur for another question from a child that is a lot more cogent than it seems John is capable of. This kid, I think her name is Bella or something like that, she deserves a whole lot better than the answer that she receives. But she won't get that in a church, will she? She'll only get it when she gets older and starts asking the hard questions and stops settling for the simplistic answers offered by her religion. I figure she'll probably be fine when she becomes an atheist. But let's see John MacArthur's answer. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, my name is Bella. And I have a question. It is, why no truth? Why not just bear with a lie and be comfortable with it? Why does truth matter? Why is it of value? He keeps having kids coming up and asking questions. And the kids are actually doing a lot better at this than he is. So that's fine. I'll answer first so that we have something to compare MacArthur to when we get back to his video. Truth is actually all that matters. If you don't have truth, you've got absolutely nothing. Now, granted, it might be difficult to get to the truth. Sometimes truth isn't known, and we have to get as close as we're able at the moment and leave the ultimate question open until we learn more. But it's the drive for truth that actually measures the value of the exercise. And this is why I immediately dismiss feelings as a rational path to truth, because feelings often get in the way of truth. They are just a distraction. If you care more about how you feel than getting to the objective facts, then you're likely to lose your path along the way. And that's why, if we look at something very common here like creationists, we see just how much their fee-fees have gotten in the way of their intellect. They want to feel special. They want to believe that they are the special creation of God. And of course, they have to explain why the world doesn't actually look like it was created, so they blame it on man, because they sure can't blame it on their imaginary friend in the sky and make him look bad. But if they could just leave all of that aside and just look at the evidence from the real world, there is no reason of any kind to think that man is special at all. We're just animals. There's no evidence for any god to begin with. Belief and faith get in the way of evidence and truth. But let's see what John has to say. First of all, God says... There are six things that I hate, yea, seven. And here's something else you ought to notice. These preachers and apologists, they sure seem to think that they know what God says, right? They spend all of their time interpreting what God supposedly says in a way that benefits their narrative. That's kind of convenient, right? But how do they actually know? Well, they don't, nor do they actually care. This is all about conning the rubes, and I've had theists object when I put it that way, but that's actually what's going on. Even if the pastor buys into it hook, line, and sinker too, he's still the one up there on stage spreading stories that he cannot personally verify to people who are sticking money in the collection plate to pay for his new car. That's a con whether you like it or not. A rational person wouldn't be attempting to tell people things in exchange for money that they haven't actually attempted to verify in some kind of objectively demonstrable way. That's why when you see people who are selling crystals or essential oils or any of that crap, they're still con men, 
even if they're really convinced that it works, because they haven't brought any actual evidence to the table first. It's why I asked everybody, how do you know that, not believe, not have faith, not have feelings, and how do you test it? Because without those two things, words are just a means to making a buck. First, a lying tongue. Lies corrupt every relationship, right? I don't know. How did you test that one? I'm sure you can find relationships where lies actually kept them together. So, for the moment, we'll just assume that any of this comes from God, not from the primitive goat herders that wrote the Bible, although you still need to keep that in the back of your mind because that's actually important. God hates this thing, supposedly. Well, so what? Who cares? That's making a lot of assumptions that I don't think John can actually back up. Of course, he wouldn't even try, because this is all predicated on faith, not fact, and truth requires fact, not faith. What's really going on here, it seems, is relying on crap we already believe to justify so-called truth. And that's not how any of that actually works. The only way you can have any relationship with anybody is tr on truth. Uh, you can't function with lies. I mean, we're living it out in, in our society today. Satan is a liar. He's the father of lies. He propagates nothing but lies. God hates lies. Well, that's your claim, at least. Yes, there are a lot of lies out there. I agree. And that doesn't get you to truth. But since when has any apologist actually demonstrated that what they believe is factually true? Because that doesn't happen either. That's what we really need to be addressing here, not beliefs, facts. It's not enough to agree that truth is important. It's essential to figure out what the truth actually is. How do you reach the truth and how do you know? How do you test it? These are questions that the religious just don't have an answer for because, as we all know, they really don't care. He's going to stand up there and read from a book of ancient mythology as if it was the truth. As if. Well, how have you ever established that? Because anyone can do that, and every religion does. They all have their favored books of ridiculous mythology that can't be objectively demonstrated to be so. John is no different, and nobody in the audience is asking any of these questions because they don't actually give a damn. They just want to believe. Most important thing in the universe is truth, the truth of God. God is true, always true, always speaks the truth, and always honors the truth. And what ass did you yank that one out of, John? This just doesn't get any better, does it? Essentially, what he's saying is, believe what I tell you because it makes me money. Again, he might actually believe this stuff. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he did. But the proof of it is always in the collection plate. You don't even need religion to do that. I could get up there and claim that truth is invisible, intangible, universe-creating pixies because I say so. They always tell the truth, yada, yada, yada. And if you believe me, stick the contents of your wallet into the plate coming down the aisle. But that is a con, isn't it? It's just saying things that you have absolutely no rational justification for in exchange for money. Just because they're dumb enough to actually believe you, just because you're dumb enough to buy into it yourself, that doesn't mean that you're morally in the clear. You can't have any meaningful relationship with anyone based on lies. And certainly you can't have any relationship with God unless it's based on the truth. You haven't shown that God exists yet. You might want to get on that part. And this is why faith means absolutely nothing. Anyone can have faith in anything. People have faith that aliens have come down and shoved things up their backsides. People believe they talk to dead folks. People believe there are giant monsters rampaging through the forests. 
these people are just stupid, and John and his ilk aren't any better. They just believe things because they want them to be true. But that doesn't make them true. Your feelings don't impact objective reality. It's either real or it's not. And the only way you can reasonably tell one from the other is with evidence. You know, that thing that the religious don't have any of. At least the Bigfoot loonies have footprints, even if they're fake. What do Christians have? Faith. That's it. Just faith. And how stupid is that? Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that might impress a child, a stupid child, but it's not going to impress anybody with a brain. Like I said, the kids seem to be asking far better questions than John is capable of answering because he's running on pure fifis and faith with no evidence anywhere to be found. He doesn't care, and neither does anyone in the audience. They're just looking for comfort, and the second they encounter anybody for whom comfort isn't enough, they scamper back to their religious safe space where everyone around can tell them reassuring stories designed to make them stop doubting the things that they believe. Well, maybe they should be doubting. Did you ever think of that? No, because that would be scary and they can't survive in a world where everything isn't soothing to their emotional state. Because that's what this is all about. And that's why people like John MacArthur don't impress me one bit. None of them do, but he's kind of at the lower end of the scale. They lack the capacity to take a step back and ask if what they're preaching is actually so. But that doesn't matter to them because the collection plates are still being passed around and they're still making money. They've got a successful con and rocking the boat doesn't get them anywhere useful. They don't actually care about the truth. None of them do, but especially when you're making a buck, they don't give a damn. To them, truth is whatever gets the job done. And I'm not sure why that impresses anyone. Because it sure the hell doesn't impress me.